Hello, friends and subscribers, potential new subscribers. Today we're picking up with our series on the 1689 Baptist Confession of the Second London Confession, and we're in Chapter 9 on free will. This one has given me more to consider than any of the other chapters and articles up to now. This one interestingly goes in a linear chronology. It starts with maybe what man was, what humankind was, and what they became after an event. Whereas the others stand on their own with biblical support, this one is framed into a narrative when it comes to the subject of free will. This is also a complicated subject because this is the area where Calvinists split. It's the area where they're split between monergists and synergists, those who believe that the act of salvation has nothing to do with the individual person, and those that believe the individual person does play some role in it. Uh, it splits Protestant and Catholic. It splits denominations inside Protestantism, this view of free will. For example, the Catholic view is that in the beginning, God gave free will and intellect. And the Baptist Confession, uh, chapter 9, does not necessarily deviate from that doctrinal view, but it does um, uh, list a separate chronology of how this occurs. Let's jump right into it. The first article in chapter 9 of free will, God hath endued the will of man, that natural liberty and power of acting upon choice that is neither forced nor by any necessity of nature determined to do good or evil. Let me read this again. God hath endued the will of man that natural liberty and power of acting upon choice that is neither forced nor by any necessity of nature determined to do good or evil. The second article. Man in his state of innocency had freedom and power to will and to do that which was good and well-pleasing to God but yet was unstable so that he might fall from it. The third article. Man, by his fall into a state of sin, hath wholly lost all ability of will to do any spiritual good accompanying salvation. Man, by his fall into the state of sin, hath wholly lost all ability of will to do any spiritual good accompanying salvation. There it is. So as a natural man, being altogether averse from that is good, and dead in sin, is not able by his own strength to convert himself or to prepare himself thereunto. This is the controversial article. The fourth article, when God converts a sinner and translates him into the state of grace, he frees him from his natural bondage under sin and by his grace alone enables him freely to will and to do that which is spiritually good. Yet so is that by reasoning of his remaining corruptions, he doth not perfectly, nor only will that which is good, but doth also that which is evil. This one sounds confusing. Let me read this again. When God converts a sinner and translates him into the state of grace, he freeth him from his natural bondage under sin and by his grace alone enables him freely to will and to do that which is spiritually good. Yet so is that by reason of his remaining corruptions, he doth not perfectly, nor only will, that which is good, but doth also that which is evil. The scriptures supporting these will be in the video description. The fifth and final article, this will of man is made perfectly and immutably free to good alone in the state of glory only. This will of man is made perfectly and immutably free to God alone in the state of glory only. So God makes, converts sinners in the process of salvation and they're only perfectly and immutably free to him alone in the state of glory only. This is an interesting article. There's a lot to it. Um, if you have not seen the playlist leading up to this point, why don't you check it out and see what you think? This uh, deals with what's called a confessional denomination. There are many confessional denominations in the Protestant faith where they draft their own statement of faith or articles or confessions. The first two in this series give the history of how this confession came about, how it was built upon, uh, its predecessors, and the documents that came more recently. It's very interesting uh, from a denominational standpoint to understand confessional faith and uh, the uh, 
various views that stem from it. Look forward to talking to you next time. Please check out my books on amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett. You can also check out things at the Teespring store. We have coffee cups, t-shirts, and a few other items. Uh, And I hope to have the new book in the Just Tell Me the Truth About Christianity series, Just Tell Me the Truth About the Reformation and Counter-Reformation, out for paperback and Kindle uh, before Christmas. Thank you, and I look forward to talking to you on the next one.